Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our thinking video notes. Um, if you look up here, I just give you a template of how I want you guys to be making the videos and what your notes should look like. So this is what your right. Everybody's notebook should look something along these lines, right? You have your red line over here. And what you guys are going to do is you're always going to put the title. If you want to put number one as video notes for thinking, you could do that. And then you're going to make a line about like, I wouldn't say the middle of the page from the red line, but you know, about this space that this area here will basically be the additional examples that we add in there, any little notes that we need to add as well. So this, at this side will be kind of empty. And then you'll have your notes over here. So we'll start, you know, this is kind of exactly what should look like, especially the beginning. And, you know, you have your subtopic and then your little, um, you know, your bullet format here. Each little kind of idea that we talk about will be here. And then you also will be including like examples as we go. When we go in class, we'll talk a little bit more about examples. So that will help. And then you'll skip a line and then start the next concept, which is thinking and then, you know, your little bullet format. But from the thinking, right, like there's like a sub subtopic. So then that will go kind of like under thinking there's concepts and then things like that. So you can like indent a little more as you go. Some people like the arrows, some like bullets, whatever works for you guys. Um, it's always a good idea to kind of. A, see what's out there, you know, get on YouTube. Um, I'm sure there's pretty much, there's some shorts, like video shorts on YouTube that will help you with um, like how to organize the, the notes. But this is kind of a good way to start. Okay, and so today we're gonna start with thinking. Um, we're not gonna go into problem solving yet, that'll be the second one. And we're gonna try something new with my iPad and writing down so that it's not this funky writing that you guys cannot read as you guys were giving me some feedback on that that you couldn't even read what I was writing. So hopefully this will help you guys. The links I am taking for you guys. Love you dearly. This is pure love is what this is. All right, so um, set up your notebook how I just showed you guys um, previously. And just making sure it's recording over here because imagine I'm like, like five seconds or five minutes in and there's no recording. We don't want that to happen. Okay, so we'll start with our first one, which is cognition. So these things are going to actually help you with your Harkness discussion um, for next class because you want to have this type of, you want to have these concepts and understanding um, how these things are going to form basically the way we think which then affects our behaviors and our values and all these other things as we go. So first one is cognition. And what I want you to write with cognition is on your first little, you'll write subtopic cognition and then your first bullet. And this is basically, and again, I am going to use these words here, which is a mental activity, right? So that's the first one. It's a mental activity that is associated with and then you might want to either like put maybe a little semi, oh, not semi, hold on a second. Let me see if I can write something here. Yes. Okay, please hold. Okay, I'm back. So here you might want to write down mental activity associated with, and then we'll put our little thoughts here. And then under that, you'll put thinking, knowing, remembering, and communication. So that's kind of like what um, cognition is. It's all of this encompassing the thinking, knowing, right, remembering, and communicating. So believe it or not, we covered in the first section of this unit, which was knowing something and remembering. We're gonna work on the thinking, right? Um, as well as communication, which is language. Uh, so next little bullet under here is I want you to write, these are complex set of activities. So writing this down, a complex set of activities that allow us to process, ready? So this is processing new information, 
right? So new info. Oops. Yeah, there you go. So allows us to process new info, solve problems, and eventually be able to create new ways of seeing things. New ways of seeing. And last but not least is basically thinking about our thinking. So new ways of seeing. And then, of course, thinking about our thinking. Now, this is cognition and write this down is basically what defines who we are and how we function. So this is the big difference between all other mammals um, is that our cognition and our abilities to think and problem solve is so advanced and so complex that still, you know, lots of research is still happening of our capabilities of our minds and our brains. Um, and the way that thinking, you know, can affect us in many ways. Um, I want you to write in there about cognitive psychologists because these are basically cognitive psychologists focus on the field of, like the approaches, they're gonna look on how do we form our concepts? How do we pro solve problems? How do we make decisions? Okay, so that is exactly what the cognitive psychologists are looking at, just like the approach, they're going to look at problem solving. Okay, now we're going to go to the next one. Um, and the next word I want you to write are basically schemas. Okay, so schemas, please hold. Okay, we're going to go a different route. And I want you to skip a line and just write the word thinking, okay? And the first little bullet that you're going to be adding there is basically the thinking is um, how we manipulate, so write that down, how we manipulate information mentally, right? Nobody sees it. These are our thoughts that nobody can see, but we're basically trying to process these thoughts, okay? This is how in our next little... Um, a bullet there, you're going to write that this is how we form concepts, problem solve, and make decisions. So that is what we're doing when we're thinking, we're trying to form these concepts, these ideas, we're trying to solve problems and make decisions. Now, thinking itself, and this is what we're learning, is that it can actually have the ability to change physically your body or how your body responds physically without any type of um, actual threat, let's say. So if we're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm in danger, there's somebody there, I hear somebody out the window, right? Our just thinking that is what's going to get our body into a physical response of that fight or flight. So powerful thoughts, um, and we'll go into that when we do our Harkness discussion. But just know that thinking is basically a method processing our mental information. All right. So from thinking, we also have what's called concepts. So I want you to write that here, concepts. And concepts are basically your schemas. And I want you to write that in there as well because they are your form. It's like a schema. So schemas and concepts are basically just a mental um, grouping of similar objects so this is what we're writing down for concepts. It is a mental grouping of similar objects, events, ideas, or people. Okay, so this is going to include having, you know, grouping things, kind of chunking stuff with our, you know, with objects, events, and ideas and people, right? And this is what, how, and I want you to include that in there, how our schemas are formed with these concepts. And the more, obviously, we live life, the more these concepts and um, grow, right? And they become a little bit more specific as, um, you know, life and our schemas grow. So some examples of some concepts could be, you know, a chair, um you know your favorite food like food what is food a what makes the foods what are you know birthday parties weddings ideas such as you know democracy or this idea of psychology or humans 
um, also just people in general, right? What makes a good friend, um, what makes a good person, what makes a bad person, things like that. So those are concepts that we're constantly through our experience um, creating, right? And eventually those are our schemas. Now, there are two types of concepts we have, and this you could write it kind of under the concepts. You have your formal concepts, and then you have your natural concepts. Now you need to write what is a formal concept. And those are basically any type of some like an idea or concept that has rules or specific properties, right? So like, for example, um, you know, a square is going to have four equal sides, right? The, that, no matter how you look at it, those are the rules and the properties of that, and that's it, right? So it's not just related to math, math, but it definitely can be um, anything related that, let's say, you know, what makes a formula, like, or what makes H2O, right? So those are formal concepts that you cannot change it as opposed to natural concept, this is more like, there's not really a defining rule for these concepts. Like for instance, a chair, a chair could look very different in many different ways, but we still know it's a chair, right? Um, we also know like what's a mountain, what a mountain looks like or how to put on pants on. So it's kind of like this concept that is, could vary depending on the, on the person but they could definitely, um, like, it could change, but it's still something that we know, like concepts. All right, so I'm gonna pause there. I read them back. <laughs> All right, I'm sure it looks really weird with me popping in and popping out, and but I have to move things around, so um, my apologies. Okay, so under concept, I want you to write schemas. And again, this is that same idea of where with schemas it's more like a concept or grouping just like what we're talking about and what i want you to write in there is that it helps us organize the world um and so that we're not constantly kind of trying to figure out something so imagine like if you know they tell you okay this is a chair right like this is the first time you ever see a chair and imagine if we didn't create schemas every time we walked in somewhere we'd be looking at okay is that a chair like we'd have to process everything all over again like if we're learning it so this is a good thing that we have these schemas okay but within those schemas we have what are called prototypes and prototypes are basically just a mental image or the best example of a specific concept or category right or schema so when i think of like the the best car the dream car that I would have would probably be like um, a Dodge Ram, a pickup, right? Depending on where I lived. If um, I wanted like a faster car, I probably don't know which car I would want anymore, but uh, I try not to think about that. So I don't get fast cars uh, because, you know, Ms. Lamana loves speed and not a good thing. I'll stick to my little Nissan Rogue mom mobile. Um, so, we try so what we do is we create these prototypes specific like the best example of what represents you know a concept and write this down under prototype right we should have written this as a subtopic sorry i forgot to say that um you can definitely write this down it's the same thing i just said um but i want you to add some stuff which is this prototypes is influenced by a your social background so it has to do with your social background your culture and your language so for instance for me hispanics right um in my household my prototype of like a home-cooked meal would probably be you know rice and beans some platanitos maybe some picadillo i don't know something along those lines right but if you go somewhere else, right, that probably will be their prototype of their favorite meal or a home cooked meal would be different. OK, um, now next little bullet. So the closer something is to your prototype, 
the quicker you are to recognize it and categorize it. So as you guys are getting older, right, you're going to start looking at things, experiencing life and things, if they seem closer to your prototype of what is, let's say, the perfect relationship, um, be it in a movie, like from a movie, from your parents or, you know, on social media. Now, when you meet like somebody, let's say, and they meet that prototype, or they look like closer to the prototype, you tend to, you know, categorize it as, oh my gosh, you know, you label it, right? As, oh, this is the one to have a perfect relationship, right? Because it meets that prototype, which of course is a great thing because we can, you know, it's easier for us to categorize life, um, but it could also get us in a little bit of trouble when we're trying to problem solve, okay? And then that is it for prototypes and i will i'll be right back pause please okay i'm back so you're gonna skip a line and i just want you to write the words critical thinking so critical thinking is basically when and we want this and this is the beauty of all ap courses at least in my eyes is that it goes above the critical thinking so for here, this is when you're going uh, beyond your concepts and your prototypes. So write that down here. So this is when you're going beyond your concepts, like the things that you've learned about and your prototypes, and then kind of trying to develop your own opinions and beliefs. So write that down as well. The next little bullet would be developing your own opinions and beliefs based on the information. It's not just like, okay, well, um, you know, this has to be, let's say, my favorite home cooked meal because that's what everybody tells me. It's kind of like, well, do I really like that? Let me experience other things. Let me experience different meals, maybe. And then then I could change my prototype or my concept. Um, so this allows us to kind of, you know, we want to be critical thinkers because it allows us to basically form our own um, opinions and take a little bit more charge in our life instead of just like accepting what is being said. So this is always good when, especially with controversial topics, that you want to be able to see both sides, right? You don't want to just see one side of what you believe is the truth and somebody else. You want to be able to understand and getting all those pieces together and kind of coming up with your own belief or opinions. Okay, so that's critical thinking. Um, which can also lead to what's called skepticism. And this is definitely something that we're going to be talking about. Like critical thinking is what we're going to be doing in what I want you to be doing in, in your Harkness discussion, which is getting these uh, opinions and these ideas and things and concepts and comparing it to your experience as well and bringing it all together so that you can create your own opinions and thoughts. Okay. And then so what many times people with critical thinking, they have what's called skepticism, which is basically their unwillingness. Oops, there goes my iPad. Yay, look at that. Boop, it's back. <laughs> okay, I know you guys are like, stop, Miss Amon. I want to get this over with. So skepticism is basically that their unwillingness to believe or like blindly believe a claim. So for instance, if let's say I see something on social media, right? Especially on social media, um, you wanna be able to say like, okay, this sounds interesting. It kind of goes with my beliefs or goes against my beliefs, like my confirmation bias. So what I'm gonna do as a critical thinker and a skepticist, I'm going to do my research and I'm going to make sure that, but here's the key, make sure when you're researching and thinking, you know, creating your own thinking, that you are looking at both sides of the argument, right? Or the three sides of the argument, whatever the case may be. But you definitely want to, you know, question and not take everything at face value so that you create your own opinion and believe. It's not just because, oh, because they just told me that's what I, you know, that's what I believe in, okay? And then the next thing we're gonna talk about is creative thinking. And creative thinking has a lot to do with that whole um, critical thinking in which, so write this down as a definition. This is our ability to produce novel, which is new 
and valuable ideas, okay, with any subject. Now, not every subject, but subjects especially that are um, important to us tend to be where we get that creative thinking, okay? So this is our ability to produce novel and valuable ideas within any subject. It could be art, music, um, it could be language arts, writing, things like that. Um, now, this allows us basically to access to all things, right? Um, wait, my bad, that's not what I meant. Because we have access to so many things with social media that it's actually limiting our creative thinking. So think about it, when, I, when teachers or when students have to do an activity that they have to be creative and they're like, wait, I need more rules or guidelines. And I'm like, just go do whatever you want. Think of however, what do a lot of students do is that they'll go on Google, right? And they'll look up ideas for, um, to do a project or whatnot, which is a great, it's, it's not a bad thing, especially when you're stuck and you're like, I don't know how to do that. Um, but it does limit our creative thinking. So sometimes I tell students, you know, just try whatever comes to your mind. Like there's no right or wrong especially when it comes to creative thinking. Now, under creative thinking, there are two types of thinkers. You have your convergent thinking, right? convergent thinking. And this is when you look at something um, in which you're only going to apply logic and um, in order to basically come up with one correct answer. Right, so convergent thinking is you're just going to basically use logic in order to get the just one correct answer, right? Which basically limits your creativity. So let's say for instance, if you only have an hour to do something, right? Like let's say an assignment, and then you're thinking, you know what? Um, there's just no way I could do something in an hour. Uh, this is going to take too long, like you start calculating, blah, 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 all this stuff. And then what happens is like you basically freeze, right? You're just like stuck there. Now, the next one would be a divergent thinker. And this is when you're basically trying to use a multiple ways of solving um, a problem. Okay, so like... For instance, if let's say I'm in a deserted island, right? And I'm a convergent thinker and there's not much around, then I'm just gonna be like, you know what? I'm in a deserted island and I'm not gonna get very far. I need food and then, you know, there's no grocery store, whatever, right? So divergent thinker would be thinking, okay, I'm in a deserted island. How can I get resources? What are things that probably are not um the resources like the actual uh, concept but i could use it for something else like for instance have you ever seen that movie castaway i think it was called with tom hanks that that he was stuck on an island right he got in a plane crash and he was literally left with a soccer ball now you would think a soccer ball was only used for to play soccer however this guy actually created it as a person, like, you know, he made it, I forgot the name of the, the soccer ball, but it became like a person for him or a companion. And then it's like using all the different tools around you for not their conventional way of being. Okay, so that's divergent. We definitely wanna be divergent thinkers because this is going to allow us to basically be creative thinkers when we're divergent. Um, the next one we're going to talk about is metacognition, and you guys all know that because it is one of our habits of mind, and metacognition is just thinking about our thinking. Um, it allows us to assess ourselves, to see, you know, what we're thinking about, if we're correct, if we're not, things like that. Okay, and then that's basically it for this. Hope you enjoyed. I'm super excited about our Harkness discussion. Nos vemos soon. Bye.